Are some of those rack devices effects generators? I see the meters and oscilloscope. Yeah, there's one effects generator in here. And it's this, um, this is a Behringer, uh, it's the V-Verb Pro, REV2496. And I have it in there, like, kind of subtly, like if I yell, yeah! you'll hear the, the reverb kick in there. And that's this piece right here that I got my finger on. Um, I'm sure you'll have questions, just can't think of any right now. That's cool, man. That's cool. Um, the audio rack is a pretty hot topic, though. Maybe I should go through that. Let me, uh, let me zoom. zoom. I'm going to zoom in on it a little bit. Uh, oh, God. What am I doing? All right, so, yeah, okay, you can see that a little better. So, at the top, this is just a monitor controller. I can switch between sets of speakers. I've got a big set of speakers out front, and then I've got can't see, but smaller set down here, this thing at the bottom. So I can A-B between those, and I've got, you know, the nice, uh, nice volume knob here. I don't know. You probably hear that in the background. So I turn the volume up and down with that. Blank panel for airflow. And then this, this is my main processor. Hit the pitch shifter. Dude, I don't want to mess with this setting. I don't want to load anything else because I've got it all dialed in. Like um, the good pitch shifter that I have, that's a lexicon unit actually. And that's in the other room. That's analog. And it's, I'd have to really jank it up because this is all interconnected with AES, 96K, 24-bit digital. So I'd have to like uh, stick it in there somewhere. But as far as this is the main processor, this controls my bandwidth when I'm on AM, I can change that. Um, it's got multi-band, excuse me, dynamics processing, uh, parametric EQ, and that comes after this thing, which is a channel strip, this is a, uh, a Wheatstone M1 channel strip. And all I'm using in that is uh, the, the nice low noise preamp over here. And um, this, uh, what is it? It's a four band parametric EQ. The two outer bands are semi parametric and the two inner bands are fully parametric. So it goes microphone into this thing uh, preamp, then EQ, that feeds the main processor, and then the main processor feeds the effects unit before it goes out to my modulator, which is down there. A little messy. But that, that Crown Audio amplifier there is what I'm using to modulate my Johnson Viking 2, uh, which is in the other room. I love it when he talks dirty. Oh, yeah. Yo, Pickle, you know it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that thing, it's like a 4-ohm output, and I'm modulating the 6146s in that Viking 2, the tubes in the Viking 2 with it. So I've got to change that from 4-ohms to almost 3,000-ohms, and I use a pair of, um, of trans toroidal transformers for that um, as modulation transformers, and they're hooked up all funny. You can see on my QRZ page, I have a schematic of that. And then um, there's a signal from an RF sampler directly after the amp that comes back out of that room and feeds this oscilloscope so I can see my, my uh, you know, the pattern. I can see my AM envelope. Woo! Sorry, guys. But um, you know what these are. These are just meters. I've got forward power, reflected power. and uh, Right below that, there's attenuators for the receive. Um, if I switch real quick back to the pan adapter, watch when I hit these switches, you'll see the noise floor go down. See that? I just switched them all in. That's 20 dB of attenuation. Then I'll switch them back out. And you see the noise floor come back up there. Um, so that's what those do. And sometimes you need attenuation on the receiver, like. Uh, a lot of times a guy will be kind of splashy, and it's good to stick some attenuation in line. 
before you call them out on being splashy because it could be your receiver. I mean, you, receivers make distortion products too when they're getting overloaded or whatnot. And SDR receivers, for the most part, like they listen to a very large bandwidth and there, there could be all kinds of crap going on. So it's just a good idea to have attenuators in line. And not to mention when I'm talking on the radio and you guys are hearing me, um, you know, that's demodulated audio from this receiver. And what happens is uh, my antenna is connected to a coax switch. So when I'm receiving that coax switch kind of, it flips over and connects my receiver. And then when I step on my foot pedal and it's time to transmit, it disconnects the receiver and connects to the transmitter. So basically this receiver sits there with no coax uh, on it when I'm transmitting, but you know, uh, the signal from my antennas uh, compare uh, compare waterfalls before and after attenuator. Yeah, I just did. Um, but anyway, that that hears me when I'm transmitting. So if I want to clean up or I'm hitting it too hard, I can stick like 15 dB of attenuation in there, and then I'll just sound better demodulated on the stream. But here, I'll do it again. Um, so if you look at Where's my mouse? If you look at like this right here, that's that's the noise floor, right? See that? And um, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip all the attenuation in now. So see how it went down like quite a bit. There you go. And then I flipped them all back off, so that's no attenuation. And you see the noise floor jump back up. So. That's all those things are doing. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the audio rack, all, all the stuff that I got going on in there. You can, you can see my receiver right here. This is actually the receiver with these two little lights. That's called grass, yeah. Yup, mowing the grass. It's easy, I just flip a switch. When I gotta mow the grass out there, it takes me three hours. <laughs> but, um, man. So yeah, that's the audio rack. I guess I could show you what else the hell is going on down here. Um, let me move this light out of the way. So, a couple more things there. Um, so, this is a Kenwood TS440, and that guy, YC156, in the chat, um, I think he modified this. It belongs to his son, who I'm babysitting it for. And I've got that hooked up now to get on uh, single sideband and, and use as an exciter. It sounds really good on AM. So just below that is a tuner um, connected right, you know, the, the radio is connected right into this tuner, and out of this tuner goes out to my amplifier uh, because there's no input tune on that amplifier. So when I want to use this with it to get, you know, the match down flat enough on the input, I'll need to use this tuner and I can, I can bypass it with this and, you know, flip it back in. If I want to use that without the amp, the tuner's bypassed. When I want to use it with the amp, I flip it on and uh, it, it, it tunes down the input for me. And this thing next to it, that's a 1500 watt power supply. That's a Dell server power supply. And I got a couple heat sinks sitting on top of that. And there's all kinds of fans behind this stuff blowing air out through here, keep it all cool. This thing down there, that's just a Denon like home stereo receiver that I use for the larger speakers that are out in front of me and I monitor stuff from my computer and you know like I said I can switch and I can listen on those or I can listen on this Wohler unit right here with the two little speakers inside of it. Um, so that kind of feeds all that. I'm using it as an amplifier. Directly below that um, is just a Crown Audio amplifier. That was actually my first modulator. I used that to modulate the Viking 2 for a couple of years but as of now, it just powers uh, two 12-inch subwoofers that I have out in front of me. And it's crossed over about 80 hertz. And then, what the hell else? This thing, this is a two-meter all-mode radio. 
we've got a two meter vertical out there on a little TV tower at about 40 feet. And, uh, you know, I talk on repeaters or, you know, I can do single sideband on two meters with this thing. It's a nice little radio, I gotta say. Um, then there's the, that's the power supply for it. So that's a lot of fun to have, uh, dicking around on two meters. And that's about it for like the, the stuff that I have out here at the operating position. Every, everything else, all the other parts of the system are, you know, back, back in there. behind that closed door and if i walk in there right now it's noisy and it's hot man which is why i'm not in there so <laughs> um well what else man i don't know my cat's hanging out down there she's bored i hope you guys aren't bored doesn't seem like i'm getting a lot of questions tonight so that's okay that's just fine i'll ramble on for a little while but yeah, that's that's more or less the setup around here. I've got, um, well, hell, you can see, uh, yeah, there's a there, there's a little bit of better shot of everything. So like, right here, that's my streaming uh, my streaming computer that you know I use to stream to Twitch with. Up here, that's another computer that controls the SDR, which I've got on this monitor right here. And then, you know, these three monitors are connected to that streaming PC. I've got you guys, uh, your chat, like over here, you can see me moving it around with my mouse. That's how I look at the chat for Twitch. And uh, yeah, I mean, my big comfy chair here that I like to sit in, a fireplace that I don't light fires in. <laughs> but uh, who was on the grassy knoll? Dude, I don't know, man. Um, didn't they get that guy? I don't know. But, uh, I don't know what else to say, man. Um, I guess still got a few people out here in the chat. Um, if y'all, y'all don't have any more questions, I mean, uh, well, it's been a five hour and 10 minute stream for the most part at this time. So, um, you're all 